Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. I've gotta apologize, I'm a little bit late on this review. These things were introduced back in what, 2019? But a recent new Guitar Day purchase finally spurred the review of a gift from Jeff Beck to Jimmy Page. That's right, we're finally going to go over the Jimmy Page Telecasters that Fender did. And I thought it was kind of a apropos subject because, you know, Jimmy Page, not really known for the Fenders. I mean, of course, in his early years with the Yardbirds, he was known for using the Telecaster. So it does make sense. But with uh, Gibson coming out with the Jimi Hendrix and some people kind of bashing Gibson for that, I thought it'd be kind of fun to review these around the same time. So, Jimmy Page, in case you're not familiar with who he is, definitely check him out. I mean, I think most of you guys have heard of him. I would say that he was pretty much my first guitar hero as far as, you know, listening to everything and being like, oh man, yes, yes, oh no. What's up with that? Big giant scratch on my case, brand new. Must have caught it on the staple. As you know. But anyways, he's the guitar player for Led Zeppelin, and my goodness, we cannot just talk about Led Zeppelin. It would take too long. They've got so many good songs, both acoustic and electric. I mean, you've heard of Stairway to Heaven, things like that. But he was gifted a guitar by Jeff Beck back in 1966, and it looked exactly like this. Man, what is going on here? <laughs> this whole unboxing episode is just crazy. Like, look at how much space is here. The headstock's like all the way up there, just hardly even in the case. I guess before we go through the rest of the history, we better make sure this thing's okay. Yeah, it looks all right. It's just jumping around in its case. It's kind of blonde, see-through blonde Telecaster here. And in 2019, Fender decided that they would reissue this guitar. And they actually partnered with Jimmy to offer these at multiple different price ranges. So this guy was actually made in the USA, but there's also a custom shop version as well as a master built version going up exponentially in price each and every single time. But what this has got going on for it is that see-through kind of whitish blonde finish. You get a special Jimmy Page neck plate. I really like the figuring on this neck. You don't get that on all of them. Kind of a little bit of flame figuring. You get Jimmy Page's signature on the back side of the headstock and it's just, you know, a really nicely specked out Jimmy Page Telecaster. However, in 1967, Jimmy Page actually installed something on this guitar that kind of changed its cosmetic appearance. And no, it's not a fancy ace strap like this that's also included in here. And no, it's not the really cool coiled cable that I guess these things come with as well. Let's see, what am I looking for here? There they are. You get some Adam Jones mirrors. <laughs> you know, I wonder, are these the exact same things as those? I don't think so. These don't have the metal backing plate. But if I were to take this protective film off, you would have a little mirror. And I think he set his up something like this going based on memory. Like four underneath the tailpiece, maybe one here and there. I'll throw up a photo right here. Maybe I'm being wrong here. And he primarily used this guitar looking like this during the Yardbirds performances, the band that he was in before, you know, Led Zeppelin and all that. So this is just a really cool little Telecaster here. That's a part of Fender history, and it's I think it's kind of cool, even though he might not be 1,000% known just for the Telecaster. He's mainly the Les Paul King in most people's eyes. It was definitely worthy of this thing happening. However, this guitar did not stay looking like this for very long. But to continue our story, we need to move on to guitar number two. Now, I will say this is the main topic of today's episode. We're not reviewing this guitar. I simply purchased it, you know, just to tell the rest of the story and give my first impressions on it. So, he wasn't really happy with his mirror look for very long. So he decided to basically strip the finish off of it and change it into something else, which Fender also decided to do a Made in Mexico release of this one. So this whole Jimmy Page lineup, it was really for almost everyone. And I say almost everyone because we're not talking like beginner guitar prices. There weren't squires made out of this. 
But at the same time, at 1400 bucks, it was rather expensive for a made in Mexico Telecaster. I mean, that's pretty much as expensive as these guys get. And it usually has to be some sort of a signature. But when this thing was first released, I was honestly kind of turned off by that price point. That's why I never reviewed this one, but I did not realize it came with a case. So honestly, it's priced better than most signature guitars coming from the brand new price point, right? And there's also a master built version of this one if you're too snobby to play a made in Mexico Fender. But inside here sleeps what he changed it to next. He did a little dragon telly vibe thing where he just painted it on over top of the body and so birthed this thing right here. This is kind of a cool little Telecaster. I think they should have done it the other way around personally. I think the mirror telly should have been made in Mexico and this should have been USA because you know it's kind of cool but I think the reason why they decided to do the made in Mexico on this simply comes down to how much needed to be done to create this guitar. Like they have to have this like little decal that they can put on top of it. It would have been a little bit more labor intensive, you know, get this shiny reflective mirror pick guard and all that stuff. I bet it came down to something like that. But this is the slightly more popular iteration, I would believe. I seriously didn't know this thing came with a case until I picked up the box when the FedEx lady delivered it. It was like, whoa, this is heavy. As far as case candy on this one, we get a giant red coiled cable. That's pretty cool, matches your guitar. And a white nylon strap. I would assume that kind of matches with what he used on stage or something like that. But this thing's kind of cool. Like the ash body has a lot of wood grain to it. It's got, it has like a little smiley face here, an evil one at that. It's like a V smile and then like an eye and then another eye. I like the way that that moves in the light. That's cool. Now, honestly, this graphic decal is a little bit different. Maybe I will do a small playing demo of this one too. It feels, whoa, whoa, <laughs> factory aging. I don't, uh, I don't think that's supposed to be there. Interesting. So my neck has finish checked like crazily. But yet, it's like a semi-satin finish. It's not complete satin, but I don't think it's a full gloss either. Did they use nitro on this? I don't know. Maybe we will have to tear both of these things apart. Maybe that's just a spec I missed. I don't think so. Yeah, I actually prefer the look of this one, to be honest. This is a very nice little piece of kit. But to wrap up our story here, this guitar did not look like the Dragon Telly for very long. Apparently one of his friends got it in like 1969. They took the Dragon Tell off and they pretty much just destroyed this guitar. As far as Mr. Page was concerned, and he really didn't do anything with this guitar until 2019. And I think that's the reason why they decided to reissue this thing now in all these different variations, as he had an artist restore his original. So that's just kind of a brief little story of Jimmy Page's Telecasters here. We've got its original variation, what it became, and then what it became again later on, I guess you could say. So let's go ahead. I guess we'll pop both of them on the workbench. I'll do the double review and demo. I wasn't planning it at first, but I'm seriously impressed by the way that this thing feels. So I think it's worth it to talk about both of them because I was seriously expecting this to feel the best and be the coolest player. But I've got to say, you know, I think I dig this kind of natural vibe. I'll see you on the workbench. Uh oh, something's not right here. <laughs> I swapped the pick guards. You know, honestly, I think they look pretty cool like this as well. That whole white pick guard here with this really gives it kind of like a, a fiesta vibe. Whereas this, you know, that shiny mirror thing kind of works with this white blonde finish. But anyways, let's take a look here. So these are both ash bodies, but these guys are billed as a two piece ash body. Whereas this one, they just say ash body, meaning it's multi pieced. I see one seam line right here. And then there's another one right here. So, so it's at least a three piece on the made in Mexico version. The less pieces that are used are generally conceived as the better guitars. Now, when it comes to the necks, that's not always the case. Cause like you get the Gibson five piece maple necks, which are seen as more premium over like a single piece. So it kind of gets confusing. At the end of the day, they're just guitar bodies. 
And without our pick guards on, you can see you get a little bit of a route here. This one does not have that circular channel. That's how they mark the Made in Mexico ones. And there was like a small period in time when Fender actually did that for the USA. Sometimes that gets confusing. But other than that, the routes are about the same. You get truss rod access right here on both of them. And as far as the pickups go, in the USA version, they call them the Jimmy Page Custom 59 pickups. However, over here on the spec sheet, they called these guys the Jimmy Page Custom Tele pickups. So I believe that means they are slightly different. But looking on the bottom side, there doesn't appear to really be any type of markings, but they used kind of a rubber grommet that kind of helps you set the height. And in here you can see the barcode identifying the guitar. Now over here, they have some sort of a marking on the edge right there. Still use the same rubber grommets. No barcode in here, but very similar routes. So it's looking like slightly higher end pickups in the USA version. As far as the bridge goes, it says Fender Patent Pending, and you get the Ridge Steel Saddles. And that's the same on both of these. And the bottom side of this pickup kind of has a brass covering, and it says 59. Whereas this one has some red markings on it, but it still has the same general construction. And it looks like in here it says natural, and you kind of got a weird looking route there. This one does not have that extra little lip down there, and we've got some more of those barcodes. But you're going to notice right here, this can be both a string through styled instrument, as well as a top loader. Now directly from the factory, it's a top loader, so the strings go through here. But if you want to take them through the body for a different tonality, you can. And that's also true on the Made in Mexico version. But it looks like the uh, graphic decal dragon whatever they just decided not to have any type of that underneath the bridge here same thing underneath the pick guard it's just magically disappeared so he must have painted this when the pick guard was still on it or they just kind of cheaped out and it's like hey nobody's ever gonna see you under here anyways as far as pickup readings bridge is 6.55 and the neck is 7.18 and middle position 3.47 Whereas over here, our bridge is 6.49, so just a little bit less hot. 7.12, and in the middle position, 3.44. So very similar pickups. I'll be curious to see how they sound differently, you know, side by side. Because resistance readings only shows you so much. But as far as our control layout, it's just master volume, master tone, with one of those Pilgrim hat selector switches. And that's pretty much the exact same thing that we have on the Made in Mexico Dragon Tally. Now here's where things start to get a little bit different. So take a look at this. We get the vintage braided wiring. You get a really nice Fender branded capacitor. 250k CTS pots. Really nice high quality switch. Whereas when you switch over here, you can see where there's a little bit of cost savings. Now this switch actually still looks pretty quality. And wow, I'm really impressed. You get the same 250K CTS pots here. The only thing that really looks different, I mean, besides the style of wire, this is just the plastic coated stuff, is the kind of cheaper little capacitor right here as compared to what the Fender one has. But here you can see the inside control cavity, and here's where they're hiding all their barcodes on the Mexican version. Whereas the USA, I mean, the routes definitely look a little bit cleaner here. They've got a, some sort of a yellow marking in there, but all of our other barcodes are within the pickup cavities. Now, as far as additional differences, this has a nitro finish, so it will naturally age. This will kind of turn a slightly yellowed hue over the time, whereas this is a poly finish. It looks like the way it's going to look. It won't age anywhere near as much as the nitro one. But at an $1,100 price difference, does it matter to you? That's something only you can decide here. But I do want to comment on this graphic. I thought it kind of looked cheesy in the stock photos, but in person, I like the way that it stands out on top of the guitar. I thought it would be flat just on the surface and then polyed over, but you can actually feel very slight differences in height here. I'm not going to be able to show that in camera, but this whole dragon design really kind of stands up just a hair. It's not a lot, but you can definitely tell there's like a little bit of a dip whenever there's not actually a design. Whereas this, it's just, you know, good fender goodness here. But let's check out these pick guards. So this one, stock from the factory, it's just a one ply white, nothing too fancy. But I was shocked when I took this thing apart. So I figured this would just be like some mirrored pick guard, right? Oh, <laughs> it's two pick guards in one. So you've got just a natural clear one. Say you didn't like the reflective surface underneath it, you could just swap it out for that clear plastic. But this is just like a 
a flimsy paper sheet that's a reflective material. They just put that underneath the clear, that way you're not tearing apart the paper, and you get the cool reflectiveness. So, kind of interesting there. And what's great is if you scratch this all up, you could technically replace it. So besides the variances between the two styles, it mainly comes down to how many pieces of ash is your guitar made out of, like a little capacitor, and the types of wire that they use. And there is some light differences between the hardware. Like, uh, for example, this is what they're using to mount the bridge. You can see how it doesn't have any threads up here. Whereas on the USA, it's completely threaded up and down. So even though the hardware looks the same, I'm sure there's some variances there as well. But now moving on to our neck here. I do want to say straight out of the box, this was a fantastically dark fretboard. It looks pretty good now that I've also conditioned it up, but I kind of cherry picked this one from Sweetwater. I thought it was the nicest looking one that they currently had. Whereas I purchased this one directly from Fender's website. Honestly, the fretboard on this, not as impressed straight out of the box. It was very dry. I actually needed to condition this one. The frets are not quite as highly as polished. Whereas on the USA, I could tell right away that there was a little bit more attention to detail straight out of the box. I mean, Sweetwater does not do any fret polishing and stuff of the guitars. They just list them as they get them. But they list both of these as slab fretboards, and they gave them both the same neck profile. It's a Jimmy Page Custom Oval C. Pretty much the biggest difference here is this one has a vintage tinted nitrocellulose lacquer, whereas this, I actually had to call Fender up on this because I had never heard this term before. They call it road-worn nitro lacquer. So even though the body is poly, this is still nitro, and I guess it is factory. I called up Fender and everything and I asked them, hey, is that is that supposed to be like that? All the finish checking on this neck? And they said yes. They were even surprised by it too. They get a bunch of calls about that, I guess. So they might not all be as heavily checked as this one, but even if you buy one brand new, just like I did, you will have some amount of finish checking. And it's not always ever apparent, but when you get it in the light just right, you can see it. But it has like a satin feel to it. It's not, it's not complete satin, but it's not complete gloss. I would honestly think most people would prefer this neck over this one. I mean, unless you like the super glossy stuff. But they both utilize the same vintage fret wire, they call it. 21 frets with the white dot inlays. Seven and a quarter inch radius with a 25 and a half inch scale length. It's all the same between these guys. So we'll have to see how they feel different. I mean, pretty much the only difference on the neck here comes down to our nut material. This is a bone nut, whereas this is a synthetic bone nut. And you can tell this one's kind of got some scratching and whatnot going on here. Whereas this one looks a little bit more refined. Something else I noticed here is the headstock shape itself. Take a look at this. Now take a look at this. You see how there's like a big hump right here? I'll switch it back over here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The headstock shape is just, you know, a little bit different. It's not something I would ever notice, but once you're seeing them side by side, that's when you can tell. This is definitely more aesthetically pleasing, but they utilize the same style of tuners, the vintage ones that go down, wraps around, single string tree with the Fender decal that says Telecaster. This headstock just looks a little bit more plain because it's not all aged and glossed over. I'll put back together. The only other thing is I wanted to talk about are like the springs right here. You can tell when taking these screws out that these springs are a lot weaker as compared to the USA version. I mean, look how many more additional coils they got. These saddles are really rock solid. Whereas these guys will kind of move around on you. And just in case you missed it earlier, you do have finish checking on the face of the headstock too. And I thought it was worth mentioning when I conditioned the fretboard on this one, they must be dyeing them or something because that's really disgusting what came off of this brand new guitar. I did not have anything nearly as bad on that one. But let's go ahead and flip over to the back side and just do a quick comparison here. So the back side of the white blonde, here you can see where you could potentially string it through if you wanted to. They've got the ferrules installed and you can see through to that ash wood grain. But here we can see our serial number, USA01, looks like 894. Something like that, Jimmy Page. And over here, since we have the natural finish, we can see straight through to the wood grain. Again, you get one piece kind of going this way, another piece that has like the really characteristic ash wood grain, and then another one that's just, you know, completely straight. So you get some varying wood grains within the three pieces on this one. And the neck plate, it is pretty much the exact same. This one is MXN for Mexican 03348. 
The output jacks are the same style on both of them, same style of strap buttons. And they're both in the same locations. And I forgot to do the neck dimensions earlier. Here they are. They're pretty much the exact same thing as far as specs go. But this neck, once again, it's got all that finish checking. I'm trying to show it at an angle that it shows up. I mean, this is that forced air kind of finish checking. It's not done with like a razor blade or anything. I think they do it with like a canned air technique or something like that. It's been a while since I've looked up uh, how to age a guitar. Maybe not necessarily realistic looking aging, but it's better than the razor blade technique in my opinion. But you have a Jimmy Page decal signature on the back of this one. You can see the Klusen style tuners real Klusen tuner, so these will be nicer quality, but as far as the decal itself, it looks the exact same. And again, this one, likely higher quality woods. So here you can kind of see the color difference between the two of those. So now that I've seen both of these, I've got to say, I'm impressed by this guitar. I thought I was going to get it and just be like, oh yeah, it's an inferior version of this guy, but it's not. So far, I mean, we haven't plugged them in and see how they felt. I mean, the neck on this one and the fretboard definitely feels better, like the fretwork was taken care of a bit more. I mean, this is clearly the nicer fretboard out of the two of these guys. But is it really worth the $1,100 price difference if you're just trying to decide which one you should get because you can only buy one? I hope this video kind of gives you some thinking points on that. So let's go ahead and grab our weights. The Dragon Telly is just about eight pounds even. Whereas our white one is about eight and a half pounds, eight pounds, seven ounces. Let's go ahead, plug these things in and hear how they sound. I think to simplify this and to make it make sense as a comparison, we'll just play one riff clean on each of the positions, go back and forth and then switch over to dirty tones. But first let's try a blind test. Listening back to this recording in a blind test, it's phenomenal how close these things sound. The first one was the Dragon Telly, and the second one was the Mirror Telly. To be fair, the Dragon pickups, I had to up the volume by about 6 decibels to match them. And I think throughout this playing demo, I tend to prefer the Mirror Telly because it was louder. It also just generally sounds more round and full. But as far as like the tonal differences, there's not a lot until we get to the distorted tones. So let's go ahead and compare some uh, Led Zeppelin riffs against each other just for fun. Thank you. 
Okay, so all in all, which one's the winner? This one, by like a mile. Like, the difference between these two is drastic. I think they're going to sound kind of similar, but this one a little bit thinner. Because this one just seemed to have more beef in general. But the biggest difference here is the way the neck feels. My goodness. This neck is so smooth. The fretboard feels great. This one, it's like a dry log. It really doesn't feel that nice. This one has a little bit sharper of corners, whereas this one's nice and rolled. It has nothing to do with cosmetic appearance. It's everything to do with how it feels to play. If I could put this neck on this guitar with these electronics, I think then yes, I would prefer the looks of this one because this one, eh, it's a little bit bland without the mirrors on it anyways. But this was clearly the winner. So if money is no object for you, Go for this one, no doubt about that. But I guess if money's no object, you might as well go for the $25,000 plus master belts then. But if you're just trying to decide between these two, which one you wanna buy, as far as playability goes, 1000% go the USA route. I'm not saying this is a bad guitar, it just needs a lot more setup work. For an extra 400 bucks to round the fretboard edges and give it a plec job, this would easily rival that, but you would still have the pickups that aren't quite as nice as the USA one. And normally I'm a big fan of like the satin finish necks, and even though this one's closer to that, I think this time I've got to give it to the gloss neck on this one. So, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed getting to check out the two Jimmy Page Telecasters. Better late than never. Let me know which one you preferred down in the comment section, and we will see you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.